the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Boy, it would be so good to see you if I could see you. But it's a few weeks more waiting, not that long anymore. So welcome again to this pre-recorded service while Steve and I actually are on vacation. In any way, we are with you in prayer and I invite you to join us in prayer. Glorious God, in your generosity you water the world with goodness and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for truly satisfying food for both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Lord, whose love in humble service bore the weight of human need, who upon the cross forsaken worked your mercy's perfect deed. We, your servants, bring the worship, not of voice alone, but heart, consecrating to your purpose every gift which you impart. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us now listen to the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ from the Gospel of Matthew, the 14th chapter. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place. And the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men besides women, and children. Good news, the gospel of Christ. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we worship, grant us vision till your love's revealing light in its height and depth and greatness dawns upon our quickened sight. Making known the needs and burdens Your compassion bids us bear Stirring us to ardent service Your abundant life to share May the love of God be our inspiration and may God's goodness shine forth in our meditation. Amen. Well, friends, what a lovely story, if you can hear it. Jesus trusting his disciples to feed the crowds. They need not go away, he says. You give them something to eat. And then the disciples' awareness of their limitations we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And finally, the amazing effect of Christ's blessings. All 
are being fed. But this right now is not a message about world hunger, even though there certainly is a connection. My message today is also not a message about our stewardship of what we have been given, even though there certainly is a connection. And this is also not a message about Holy Communion, even though Jesus' words and actions here are mirrored in our liturgy. He took, he broke, he blessed, and gave. This message today is about multiplication. Yes, you heard me right. But not about the kind of multiplication we learn at school. You know, two times four is eight and so on. No, this message and this passage of the gospel, I think, is about a different kind of multiplication. A new math that is as old as, well, Adam and Eve. When Jesus entrusts his friends with the feeding of the crowds, they know that they cannot pull it off. Just too little for too many. It cannot work. It cannot work if they only rely on their own resources, that is. On Jesus' invitation, however, they brought what they had. And Christ blessed it. And it was enough. We don't know how or what. We only see that they brought the little they had into the holy presence. And that presence blessed the little. And it turned out to be even more than enough. I don't understand this. I just observe it together with you. And I see the divine mathematics at work where five loaves and two fish equal 5,000 fed. Who could have known? And who could have known that a high school teenage boy in the fair fight could defeat a giant with the muscles of the younger Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yet, with divine mathematics, David did. Who could have known that an outcast and criminal could lead a motley band of slaves against the mightiest empire of the world and win? Yet, with divine mathematics, Moses led the Hebrews to freedom. Good news. Good news indeed to be reminded these days of the power of God's holy presence and what it can do and does do. For mortals, all this is impossible, Christ says in Mark, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. And it is the same idea the Gospel of John expresses when Jesus says, I am the vine. You, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But abide in me as I abide in you. Friends, we may feel so helpless so often in our lifetime. And the blessings of growing older is to realize that helplessness and dependency is a fact of life. How hungry we are and shall be remains an experience during our lifetime. And how hungry we are and shall we be if all we do is put our trust in our own abilities. But bring your limited resources and your limited being into the holy presence of the God of all love and care and divine mathematics spring into action. The multiplication of the kingdom of God. We will bear fruit in abundance. 
That, to me, is the call out of this gospel story. To bring all I have and all I am into holy presence and have it all blessed, blessed abundantly to generate abundance. Even in times of isolation and the pandemic, even as we are all still fasting from Holy Communion, bringing the morsels and broken pieces of who I am and what I have into Holy Presence will trigger divine mathematics. Blessings abound and we will be fed. Good news, good news indeed. Amen. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on. Light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is all I fall, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for your creation, your world, your church, and all who are in need, saying, Lord, in your mercy, and responding with, hear our prayer. You, O oh God, take resources that appear to be meager, bless them, and there is enough for all. May we trust that what you bless and invite us to share with one another and the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all living things you made. Protect, O God, this abundance for the well-being of all. Reverse the damage we are causing. Replenish groundwater supplies, provide needed rains in places of drought, and protect forests and habitats from destruction for short-sighted prophets. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. And you open your hand and satisfy the needs of every living thing. Hear the anguish of many, the lost and lonely, the sick in body and spirit. In a moment of silence, we bring them and all our concerns to you for your blessing. For wholeness and healing in all of your creation, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And you offer us the blessings of your salvation. 
Give our parish here at St. Mark's Anglican Lutheran Church. Give the worldwide ecumenical body of Christ on earth during this time of pandemic the courage to come and bring to you the little we have and are for your blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. And in a certain hope that nothing, not even the coronavirus, can separate us from your love, we offer our prayers to you through Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying or singing. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins we forgive those who sin against us save us from the time of trial deliver us from evil for the king the power and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us now together with you at home and us here sing about the peace Christ offers and brings. Yes, the Apostle Paul reminds us, reminds you, neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, blesses you and keeps you in eternal love now and always. Amen. Amen. 